Harper. Welcome once more to our Sunday evening services here at the Salford uh, Community Church. And uh, we're going to be looking at uh, the second uh, letter of uh, Timothy uh, this, morning, uh, this evening and chapter 2. But before we get to that, we're going to just spend some time in prayer and reading of God's Word. So let's bow our heads and commit the time together uh, to the Lord in prayer. Let's pray. Father, once more we want to ask your help uh, to be with us as we would come to your word. We're very conscious, Lord, that we need that help. Uh, Lord, we appreciate that uh, we are coming, Lord, to handle uh, the precious word, your precious word to us. And so we pray, Father, that we might come not with uh, tiredness or not with uh, um, just an indifference, uh, just because it's a Sunday but we come because we want to hear your voice and we praise you and thank you for the Holy Spirit who does take of your word and does speak to us uh, to, in our minds and in our hearts and, and Lord uh, we pray that as uh, Timothy sought to encourage sorry as Paul sought to encourage Timothy then Lord we pray that we may also be encouraged ourselves and, and strengthened and helped in our walk uh, with you. Uh, we pray all these things in Jesus' precious name. Let's, uh, let's take that reading that we mentioned, uh, 2 Timothy uh, chapter 2, and we, we read from uh, verse 1 and we will finish at verse 15. 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 1 to 15 you uh, therefore my son be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus and the things that you have heard from me among many witnesses commit these to faithful men who will be able to teach others also you therefore must endure hardship as a good soldier of Jesus Christ no one engaged in warfare entangles himself with the affairs of this life that he may please him who enlisted him as a soldier and also if anyone competes in athletics he is not crowned unless he competes according to the rules the hard-working farmer must be first to partake of the crops consider what I say and may the Lord give you understanding in all things Remember that Jesus Christ of the seed of David was raised from the dead according to my gospel, for which I suffer trouble as an evildoer, even to the point of chains. But the word of God is not chained. Therefore I endure, I endure all things for the sake of the elect, that they also may obtain the salvation which is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. This is a faithful saying. For if we died with him, we shall also live with him. If we endure, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he also will deny us. If we are faithless, he remains faithful. He cannot deny himself. Remind them of these things, charging them before the Lord not to strive about words to no profit to the ruin of the hearers. Be diligent to present yourself approve to God a worker who does not need to be ashamed rightly dividing the word of God well may may the Lord add his blessing then uh, to uh, his precious word well we're going to come uh, to prayer again before we come to the preaching of God's word uh, but uh, one thing I wanted to mention uh, uh, my daughter Sean sent a a letter to the church that uh, John read out in the midweek um, but in it uh, she wanted to thank the church and I know that there were some people who may be uh, uh, watching this uh, this, uh, this evening who uh, wouldn't know much about what John had had said uh, but to uh, say that she gave uh, a very heartfelt thanks for the uh, sum of money that the church was able to uh, donate uh, to give uh, not only to her but also uh, to uh, the church in Novosibirsk uh, the Uzbek church that are doing uh, a, 
a great work of evangelism uh, around the city, but especially a focus at this moment on 28 Uzbek people that you uh, hope have heard about who have been trapped in the airport there, uh, not able to go back home, not able to, to live in Russia, and are sort of stuck in a kind of uh, a neutral, uh, a neutral space, I suppose. And uh, that the church have been supplying these Uzbek people who are all Muslims uh, with, with food and with clothing and are able to witness and to testify to the, go uh, the gospel to them and show and share the love of the Lord Jesus. And she sent uh, that letter and say that that situation was still ongoing, but that her pastor and his wife in uh, Novosibirsk were, uh, were very grateful for that sum of money uh, that they were able to continue that ministry uh, to these poor people. So uh, great thanks uh, from me and especially from Sean for what you were able to contribute to that 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 cause. So we're going to come to prayer now, and we we'll remember uh, those uh, Uzbek, uh, the church. Uh, we we are reminded, of course, that although they may be hundreds, if not a couple of thousand miles away from us, we're all one in Christ, and we're all seeking to worship the one Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, we'll pray for them, as uh, I hear that they pray for us as well. So let's bow our heads in prayer. Let's pray. Lord, as we come before you, we uh, have a sense, uh, Lord, in, in prayer of our unworthiness because we remind ourselves of your holiness. Uh, we remind ourselves, Lord, of how uh, a man called Isaiah in, in a vision that you gave to him was taken up into heaven. Uh, he saw you high and lifted up, he says, and the train uh, of your glory filled the temple. And he, he was in great difficulty trying to explain what he was seeing, but other than the glory that, that was yours. And Lord, it made him feel unclean. He said, Lord, that he was a man of unclean lips and he lived amongst a people of unclean lips. And Lord, when we come before you and we think of your holiness and your glory and your majesty, then Lord, we can feel like that ourselves. And so we have to confess before you, Lord, that uh, though we love the Lord Jesus and though we love you and, uh, and though we want to serve you Lord there's so many times in our lives so many things that we do even from day to day which are not uh, not, we sh not, not doing the things that we should be doing and sometimes Lord we do things that we, we, we shouldn't be doing at all oh Father we ask for your forgiveness again and your mercy and, and Lord we look to the Lord Jesus Christ and we remember him that he was the one who died on a cross your son who paid the price for all our sin and Lord we come before you in repentance knowing that Lord that repentance in repentance through him through what Christ has done we have the forgiveness and the cleansing of our sins and so, Father, we have a confidence of coming into your presence as uh, our Father in heaven. Uh, we do, again, we don't deserve that, to be called the children of God. But that is what we are because of, of Jesus. And all is because of Jesus. And so, Father, we thank you also that uh, this, this evening we uh, are united in prayer. Not only, Lord, as your church here, but, Lord, we think of your people around the world Lord we praise you and thank you on the Sabbath on the Sunday the churches are gathering and the peoples they may not be gathering in quite the same way that they uh, have been but Lord there's still a gathering of your people and there's still a praising and there's still a worshipping of your people and Lord as we have our service this evening we know uh, that uh, some hours ago the Uzbek church there in Novosibirsk in Siberia were gathering too and worshipping and remembering us and we remember them in prayer too although we realise that not only have they got a kind of lockdown situation that we have but they've also got the restrictions put upon them by the government but yet Lord they're faithful and yet Lord they're seeking to share the good news of Jesus with the people of the of the city and we praise you for that and we thank you Lord for for news uh, recently of people that have come to faith through 
that gospel ministry we pray Lord that you really will bless them and that Lord they will uh, be strengthened and grow in numbers and uh, Lord begin to have other churches throughout this big city of Novosibirsk but we think of the situation Lord that they're engaged in uh, today of those 28 people in that airport 28 people uh, alone friend, uh, friendless uh, fearful perhaps uh, not wanted by Russia not wanted by Uzbekistan just stuck nowhere to go nothing coming in no jobs no money no nothing but Lord we praise you and thank you for that church that's able to stand in the gap to meet the need to bring that food and the clothing and but more especially we thank you that they're able to bring the gospel and we pray father that they will be able to continue to do that and that the gospel will be taken of your spirit and apply to the hearts of these families as they as they're there in that in that airport and lord we thank you for that ministry and bless it we pray and bless the pastor and his wife and uh, the the elders of the church and lord as we ask your blessing upon them we would also ask your blessing upon us as a church oh lord may we continue to meet in this way will you enable us to grow in strength and faith and love for our lord jesus christ for those of our fellowship lord who are not perhaps able to even see this broadcast Lord we pray that you would bless them where they are and Lord we pray uh, we pray that you would have mercy upon this nation again uh, and have mercy upon us Lord and your true churches and that we will soon be able to meet in a more um, physical way gathering together in a building gathering together face to face being able to talk and to share and to, to sing and to and to praise your name while that's not yet possible help us to sing praises to you nonetheless from the depths of our being and may you be speaking to us even in these times reminding us again of that you are a, a loving father we have a precious savior and how we belong to, to Jesus uh, we pray these things then in Jesus name Amen Amen well, let's uh, let's turn our thoughts, our attention uh, to the Bible once more, uh, and our passage we're going to be looking at is two Timothy chapter two, and that uh, section from verse seven to verse ten, and we are seeking to remember the Lord Jesus Christ, as Paul tells us there in that passage. Earlier on in chapter 2, Paul has been giving us three examples, or rather he's been giving Timothy three examples, and from Timothy, of course, it, uh, it, to us also, three examples of what it means to be uh, living out uh, our Christian life. And they were two, three examples from, from life, weren't they? They were the soldier, a uh, soldier who has to endure hardship and be, obe obey orders, Christian life can be hard sometimes but we must always seek to be obedient to our Lord there's the athlete who has to be self-disciplined and has to obey the rules in order to compete in the race and that again is a reminder to us of the disciplines of the Christian life of, of uh, reading the scriptures and in prayer and, and seeking to be a faithful servant of Christ and then the farmer is mentioned in this chapter too the hard-working farmer who uh, has to work hard in order to reap the rewards of the of the fields uh, so that he may uh, life, have life but I want us to, to move on to verse 7 uh, at this uh, time because having given us those three examples Paul says in verse 7 consider what I say and may the Lord give you understanding in all things uh, this next section that we're moving uh, into uh, verse uh, 7 uh, to about verse 14 uh, it, it does strike me that uh, 
we almost have two bookends to this section. Uh, verse 7 is the one uh, bookend where Paul tells Timothy, consider what I say. And then verse 14, Paul is uh, writing to Timothy and he's, he, he has in mind, I think, the, the members of the church at Ephesus. And he says to them in verse 14, or says to Timothy, remind them of these things. And these verses are, are links to what Paul is saying. Uh, links about uh, what he's uh, said in the past, what he's just written, and links to what he is going to be uh, writing about. So verse 7, of course, is an obvious link for Timothy to reflect on uh, the examples of the soldier, the athlete, the farmer. And, and in a way, uh, when he gets to verse 7, he's saying to Timothy, how do you measure up? How do you measure up? Consider, he says, verse 7, consider what I say, and may the Lord give you understanding in all things. Now, how do we measure up? How do we measure up, as we saw last week, to the examples that were given to us of that soldier, athlete, and farmer? But I think there's a, another immediate application that we can get from verse 7, and it's one I think we mustn't just skip over. Otherwise we'll miss a point that Paul is giving to us here in this passage. And that is, how do you read scripture? How do you read scripture? I wonder if you read your Bible like I read books uh, sometimes. You see, I can, I can skip over uh, a book. Uh, I, I can begin to read the book and I, I, I and I um, it's telling me something and I say to myself well yeah I, I know all about that I, I don't really need to go in much detail about that because I understand that and I and I will skip through the various chapters of a book perhaps to find something more interesting that I want to read now that might be legitimate in reading a book sometimes there are times in certain books uh, that you may have to, to skip over things and get to the bit, the bit of the book you want to read about but you mustn't do it with the Bible because with the Bible you need to reflect upon it you need to meditate upon it I think sometimes when you've got a passage you ought to preach it to yourself and that's what Paul is saying here I think to Timothy He's, all, he's, he's spoken about these important examples of the soldier, the athlete, the hard-working farmer. And he says, consider what I say. Meditate on what I say. And he says, and may the Lord give you understanding in all things. Now, just think about, uh, about Timothy for a moment. He might have... Uh, he might have been reading this letter and he says, oh, I know exactly what Paul's going to be saying about a soldier, you know. I've heard him preach about soldiers in the past. In fact, I was there when he wrote Ephesians and uh, uh, what he said about the full armour of God. I was there and I, I read it. So what, why is Paul telling me about soldiers? You see the temptation, and perhaps this might even be a temptation for Timothy, is to say, well... I don't need to hear this, I know it. But when you read a Bible, when you read scripture, you do need to read it. You do need to hear it. You do need the word of God to sink into your heart. So we need to meditate upon what it means to be a good soldier, a good athlete, and a good farmer. Now, I don't think uh, there in verse seven that Paul is necessarily writing to Timothy only to consider what he said before he's also pointing to what he's going to say uh, now from verses 8 to 10 onwards and so we're going to move on as well uh, so uh, verse 8 we're told by uh, Paul remember that Jesus Christ of the seed of David was raised from the dead according to my gospel now let me remind you there in verse 8 that this letter uh, was, to, was written by Paul 
to Timothy. And if you can put yourself in the place of Timothy, uh, he might have read this letter and he said, well, how can I not remember that the Jesus Christ is of the seed of David, was raised from the dead according to my gospel? I was with you for two missionary journeys. I've heard you preach this so often. How can I not remember uh, Jesus Christ? Well, he does need to remember. And we also need to remember Jesus Christ. Because, strange as it may seem, even if you are in, engaged in a, a preaching and a teaching ministry, every week you can forget Jesus the Christ. You see, you can get caught up. And maybe this is what Paul is fearful concerning Timothy. You can get caught up in the busyness of daily life. In, 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 you can get caught up in the, in, in the life of the church, in the doings and the organising and the meetings and even uh, the preparation for teaching and preaching and you can forget Jesus Christ I remember just before I went to Bible college uh, a missionary came up to up to me and uh, uh, a lady and she said to me don't forget she said to make sure that you have your quiet time because you're going to go to Bible college and you're going to be studying the Bible and there's going to be so much scripture and there's going to be so much about the Bible you're going to be learning and uh, being taught but you need to have your quiet time for your own soul your mind's going to be filled with scripture don't think that's enough you want to feed the soul also and I think Paul has that in mind for Timothy he's, gone, he's been so engaged in ministry but Paul wants to feed the soul of Timothy. Remember Jesus Christ. You see, you can come to the point of talking about him rather than talking to him. You can teach about him rather than dwell on him and enjoy him. You can go from talking and sharing Christ with others to talking with others about the church about the ministry and even about the mechanics if you like of the gospel and this I believe is what Paul is seeking to share with, with Timothy perhaps we might say that in a way perhaps if we can put some words into Paul's mouth we might say uh, Paul saying something like this to Timothy Timothy you are so busy about the, the work of the church in Ephesus but have you forgotten someone? Have you forgotten Jesus? Are we so busy? So busy about life and sometimes about church life that we have forgotten someone. We've forgotten Jesus. And that's why I think Paul writes uh, this to Timothy uh, and makes the point that he needs to remember. Verse, verse 8 Remember that Jesus Christ of the seed of David was raised from the dead according to my gospel. Perhaps Paul is saying in those verses, uh, that verse to, to Timothy, have you lost? Have you lost the wonder and the amazement of who Jesus is? So that brings me on to this point. What we should remember about Jesus what we should remember about Jesus in this one verse and we're really not going to get much further than this one verse uh, this evening but in this one verse Paul has packed this verse full of theology let's read it again because there's, there's theology here remember that Jesus Christ of the seed of David was raised from the dead according to to my gospel and what's the first thing uh, that Paul is telling us here well I think it's this Jesus is a true man Jesus is a real human being and he's telling us that as far as the gospel is concerned that Jesus had to be a true man it was necessary for him 
uh, to be a true man if he was to be our substitute that, that substitute on the cross of Calvary that substitute was the, who was to bear the wrath of God upon himself for our sins that he was taking to the cross he has to be a true flesh and blood human being but but Paul is telling us something else he's telling us about the ancestry of Jesus he says Jesus well he doesn't say this but I'm saying this Jesus is the son of promise Jesus is the son of promise and we, we see that in verse verse 8 uh, remember that Jesus Christ of the seed of David that phrase of the seed of David is uh, an Old Testament phrase that speaks about the Messiah uh, throughout the Old Testament scriptures when the prophets have been speaking about the coming of the Messiah uh, the Christ uh, they often relate him relate him back to the fact that he is related he's of the family of David his da great David's greater is to be da great David's greater son and uh, he is of the seed of David and the Pro Old Testament prophets spoke of him they spoke of his birth of course they spoke of his ministry they spoke of his death they even spoke of his resurrection uh, they spoke of him as the one who was going to save the, his people the one who was going to redeem them the one who will open heaven to them that's what Jesus did didn't he Jesus Christ the seed of David but then Paul moves on in verse 8 and he tells us something else uh, that Jesus was raised from the dead according to my gospel and so what he tells us here is that Jesus is not just a true man a real flesh and, and blood human being and he's not just simply related to King David so that he uh, you know uh, by inheritance he, he should be the king of Israel he tells us something more he is God also Jesus Christ the seed of David is the, is the God man and he needed to be so if he was to go to the cross he needed to be God the son he needed if he was to be the sin bearer for all our sins to be the one who knew no sin and to be the one who perfectly obeyed the law of God his father you see a sinful man could not go to the cross for us if a sinful man went to the cross at very best I don't think that's possible but at very best he could only have gone to pay for his own sins but Jesus the man who is God can and he does he went to the cross he paid the price he was able to bear our sins on that cross and the proof of the fact that when he declared it is finished and it was finished the price had been paid is that he having died after three days lived again rose from the dead and he said seated at the right hand of the father he is the one and only he is the one who could pay the price and open heaven to us to all of us who believe in him that's the gospel that's what Paul says is my gospel there's a hymn uh, if we could uh, I would have said we'll sing this hymn but there's a hymn with one verse I think sums it all up it's a hymn that we normally sing at Easter and it's the hymn there is a green hill far away but it's got a tremendous verse and the verse is this there was no other good enough to pay the price of sin he only could unlock the gate of heaven and let us in now that's what Timothy was being reminded of that's what Timothy needed to to know this is what will strengthen him in 
the gospel ministry at Ephesus. That's what we all need to hear because that's, that is what will strengthen us in our Christian life. We to remember Jesus Christ, what he has done for us. The true man who went to the cross, the true Messiah and the true Son of God. All that was possible, all that was absolutely had to be possible for him to pay the price for all our sins. And that's the very thing that we need in all the troubles of our lives to remember Jesus Christ and, and the gospel, his gospel. We haven't uh, this evening, I don't think, uh, time to really look at verses 9 to 10 and we'll do that on a, another occasion. And it'll be important that we do look at verses 9 and 10 as well. But let me just read those verses to you. Verse 9, for, for which, says Paul, he spoke about, he's spoken about uh, my gospel and he's talking about the gospel, for which I suffer trouble as an evildoer, even to the point of chains. But the word of God is not chained. Therefore I endure all things for the sake of the elect, that they also may obtain the salvation which is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. But I want to say something as we come to a conclusion. And it's this. What has kept Paul going on his life of faith? What has kept Paul going on, going on in his life of faith? And here in verses 9 and 10, we discover really that Paul has had a life which has been full of struggles and difficulties. He, he, he gives us a little snapshot of this in verse 9 and verse 10, doesn't he? For he says, for which I suffer trouble. Uh, his preaching of the gospel has caused him trouble. Uh, he's treated, he says, as an evildoer. For, for which I suffer trouble as an evildoer. He's treated as a criminal. He's been imprisoned on at least two occasions. Even to the point of chains, he says. He's been chained to a wall, chained to a Roman soldier. He reminds us that the word of God is not changed. And then he says in verse 10, Therefore I endure all things for the sake of the elect. Well, he endures all. If you want to find out what the things that Paul endured, go to 2 Corinthians and you'll find out about the shipwrecks and the, and the sufferings that he had. And he kept on going on in his life of faith, believing in Jesus. What has kept Paul in the faith? What has kept Paul preaching the gospel despite the imprisonments and the chains and all the dangers of life uh, to his life that he faced at the hands of his enemies? Perhaps another question would be this. How can Paul, who's a prisoner in Rome, in chains, be an encouragement, an encourager to Timothy? in this letter indeed we might even ask how can Paul at the end of his life as he's facing uh, a certain death by execution from Emperor Nero in Rome how can this letter be an encourager and encouragement to us it's surely this he remembers he remembers Jesus Christ the seed of David who was raised from the dead according to the gospel that he preached how is he able to be there how is he able to be a faithful servant how is, how is he able to be an encourager to a young Timothy he remembers Jesus Christ and what Jesus has done and that's our encouragement too isn't it that's how we keep on going on in the Christian life well let's uh, let's bow our heads in prayer as we come to a, a close uh, this evening let's pray Father we praise you and thank you again for the encouragement and the reminder to us of Jesus Christ this evening 
that he is the one who has died for us. He is the one who's paid the price for our sins. He is the one who's opened heaven for us. And uh, Lord, we pray that in this uh, world in which there seem so many problems and difficulties, uh, uh, not only in our own lives, but in the world itself, Lord, help us to be reminded again that this life that we live is not a life that's sure permanently, but it's a, a fleeting life in so many ways. But eternity is what awaits your child, what awaits us who, who believe in the Lord Jesus. And so, Lord, help us to keep our eyes, as another writer said, uh, fixed upon Jesus, the author, the finisher of our faith. Now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all to be asked or think according to the power that is in us, that is at work in us, to him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. <laughs>